In this video, we are going to start to talk about polygonal modeling in Cinema 4D. We're going to see a couple of techniques that can help you to model your architecture, interior design, furnishing, and basically everything that is straight and that has like hard edges. Now, this is also called hard poly modeling, and later we will also see the soft poly modeling. Now you can see here I've modeled uh, a little bit more of the apartment here. So I'm going to continue to show you how you can use the polygonal modeling to create architecture, whether it is a, a single house or an apartment or whatever. Now, first of all, we're gonna set our view to the top view and I'm going to create a simple cube. So I'm going to go here to Mesh Primitives and create a cube. Now, since I have everything in scale here, we have resized the plan view in the correct measure and scale. Now I can use this cube and insert precise dimensions. So if I select it, go to the object, I will say here, for example, if I want to do an interior wall, I can say, I can say here 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters and for the epsilon it's going to be 300 so 3 meters and let's switch view and go to the side view now you can see that my object is positioned on the ground but the pivot is in the middle so what i could do here to be more precise is i can actually well first of all i will turn this into editable but before i do that I better think of later segments or subdivisions that I will need. Now you can see from a wireframe that usually an apartment or an house has different uh, lines inside. Now those lines will be helpful to create windows and doors. So think before you create your polygonal object of what you will need later on. Now I'm going to give you some tips, but then you can figure out that yourself. Now in my case, I usually use four segments in the height so that I can create windows, doors, and also other architectural elements. Now, when I divide this, let's see where it is, right there. There you go. I can now convert these to editable. So right click and make editable or press C and there you go. And once you have that you can move the axis with the snaps I will move the axis down at the bottom of the object. Then I will deactivate the axis and select the object mode again. Go to coordinates. Now if I set this to zero this is going to be placed exactly on the ground floor, on the ground plane. And now I can move it into position. So I will go here in the plan view, move it where it needs to be, which... Okay, let's find a place to model here. Let's do this toilet. So I'm going to go here. And now this is an image, and as we said before, is you, you need to guess a lot when you use an image. It's going to be really approximate. It's not like using a DWG file or a CAD file where you can just select the lines and extrude. Here you need to guess more or less where your wall will be or your architectural element will be. So let's say that this is going to start there. Okay, then I will zoom in, select the faces. And I can see the faces here in the 3D view. So I need those faces right there. So I can use, for example, the brush selection tool and click and drag. And hold shift if you want to add to the selection and hold control if you want to deselect. But also a quicker way that I like to use is to go here and go to the rectangle selection use the top view and just go like this. So this is faster. And I have selected all the faces at once. Now I can move them because 
I am in polygonal mode, so it's like working with a sculpting tool. So I can just create here an entire wall starting from that initial pillar. And then I stop here. Now, how do I create that other wall? Do I have to create another element? No, I will just hold control with the faces selected. Hold control, click and drag. And there you go, I'm creating a new segmentation, a new subdivision there. Now, if you use the grid, you can be more precise. If you use the snap, you can be more precise. You can use all the different tools that we saw to work more precise, or you can just deactivate everything and just work with your eyes and try to figure out things. Now, if you work pre more precise, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but that's your choice. It depends what you need to do with the project. If you need to do renderings, it doesn't matter if you are too precise. You can go faster and be less precise. And this is what I'm going to do right now. So I deactivated the snaps. Now I will select those faces again, hold control, click and drag, and there's another part of my wall. Now probably there is a door there, but I cannot actually see it. This is because the poor quality of the uh, drawing there. But let me guess that here there is a door. So I'm gonna extrude again, creating a door in that position, and then extrude once more, stop there, extrude another little piece, about again 10 centimeters, and that's another part that I'm going to extrude. And then I can proceed. And you can see here, you can go on and on and do all the different walls. Now in this point is where I'm going to create another wall. So I'm gonna select those faces, hold control, and that's the other wall right there. So you can see how fast it is to design in polygonal modeling this way. Now you also have another tool which is pretty handy and you can use it to attach pieces together or also to create holes for windows and doors, and this is the bridge. Bridge is probably one of the most important. Now I will select the phases that I need to create the door. So again, I will select the object first, select the faces, choose the type of selection. Now the door is gonna go there, and it looks a little bit small, so probably I need to make it larger later. So select the faces on both sides, which needs to be the same. So make sure that you select the exact number of faces. Okay. And then you use the bridge, click there. And if it doesn't turn out well the first time, don't worry, just try to click again and it's gonna work eventually. Now this door looks too small. And also I don't know if it's, in the correct height and so on. So now I'm gonna use the points. So you can use the faces, you can use the edges, you can use the points. They all work in different ways, but they all can be useful. Now for the points, let me go here and you can see that, well, let's change the tool here with the rectangle selection. So I can get those and usually I place those at the bottom of the wall to create another material here for the bottom of the wall. And then I use this a second line here for the windows or the railings. And this one here will be the height of the door, which is almost there. So just need to place it a little bit down. Again, you can use the snaps, but you can also do this with your uh, eyes. Okay, so it looks like the rest of the other part of 